millions of kids dream of playing in the NBA. Almost all that make it have one thing in common, height. If that's all it takes, then this guy is a slam dunk. He's less than an inch away from being the tallest man on earth. I am Sung Ming Ming. I'm 22 years old. Wow, how tall are you? Seven nine? Oh my God. Born and raised in China, Sun Ming Ming has come to America with a giant-sized dream. Ming is here training to go to the NBA. Go! We followed Sun Ming Ming for an entire year to find out. Could his towering physique become the stuff of basketball legend? Sun Ming Ming will revolutionize the game of basketball. But ironically, the same extraordinary height that might make him a basketball superstar could also kill him. He may die right on the basketball court. This is Sun Ming Ming's amazing journey. This is the anatomy of a giant. When it comes to truly comprehending Sun Ming Ming's size, it's a tale of the tape, a very tall tale. Height, seven feet, eight and three quarter inches. Arm span, seven feet, eight inches. Weight, 360 pounds. Shoe size, 19. Jersey size, extra, 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 large, tall. Or try this. If he makes it to the NBA, he will be the tallest player in the league ever. He's four inches taller than Yao Ming, has eight inches on Shaq, and towers two and a half feet over former All-Star Muggsy Bogues, the shortest player in NBA history. He's more than tall enough to make it in the pros, but is he good enough? That's the gamble sports agent Charles Bonsignor is making. I saw Sun about two years ago for the first time out in California. He was on the junior national team in China, and they came out to train for a month over in Pasadena. And at the time, he was just a big, long body. He needed a lot, a lot of work. And most recently, I took a team to China. So I ran into him again. I saw that he improved a little bit. The leader of the Chinese team was John Weiping. In China, nobody take care of him. He didn't uh, uh, have uh, the specific coach to teach him how to everything. I mean, footwork or basketball or conditioning. Nobody take care of him. I want to make an NBA. What no one knew was that a ticking time bomb was hidden inside Sun's brain. And the very thing that caused his extraordinary height might also kill him. One more slide. And then we're done. So Charles, with no hint of the impending medical crisis, decides that with Sun's height, he's worth a chance. We made a, a proposition to him that we would take all the responsibility for him. We would try to make him an NBA ball player. And if we did, great. It would be wonderful for both sides. It would be a source of pride for their province. If not, he would always go back to China as a better basketball player. Yeah, he's, he's ready. He's ready to practice, to work out, to improve. But being a giant means giant problems. We noticed that when you go to dunk, you would land to one side and you would land gingerly. <laughs> a skyscraper can't be built on quicksand. Suspicions fell on Sun's foundation. So he sees a podiatrist who consults for professional sports teams, Dr. Howard Liebeskin. You want to take your shoes and socks off, please? His feet were, were disgusting, his toes. I mean, they were curled. They had welts all over them. When you would work out, they would bleed on top. Son's feet have been in pain since his childhood. He never got big, big enough shoes, so he got hurt. Since a boy, 
and the shoes that you're wearing right now, is there irritation or friction from these shoes? A little bit, but you know, before in China, he couldn't find the big enough shoes. Probably these are made in China. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, as I made in China. X-rays confirm the bones in his toes are grossly deformed. And this is basically the end of the bone, and I'm really probably touching the head of that bone too. Dr. Liebeskind makes molds of Sun's huge feet to have special shoes designed to accommodate them. Yeah. We have some issues that Sun Ming Ming is very aware of. And these are structural issues that have been problematic for him forever and always in terms of what he was uh, given. And these are his feet, and he just deals with it. <laughs> like bolt. At this juncture in his career, we're going to just figure out ways to keep him comfortable so he can mechanically go forward and, and uh, from a basketball standpoint, really go forward. Immediate treatment of the massive corns, shaving, and sanding will provide some relief. But the ultimate surgical fix would mean about a year of rehab. Sun's career goal doesn't allow time for that. You look at these feet and they want to be corrected. You know that, he knows that. But it is not the point in his life for anybody to intercede right now. With his corns treated, Sun is already feeling better. Good. Good. Very good. All right, we Thank will help you. you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. <laughs> Son never expected to be on a path to the NBA. He was born in a rural part of northern China, the son of farmers, neither of them exceptionally tall. Growing up in a country where the average man is five foot six, Sun literally didn't fit in. I started to notice that I was taller than everyone else my age when I was around seven or eight years old. I was already about six feet tall. The growth spurts just kept coming. At 14, he was already six foot five. When Sun was 16, Chinese officials took notice. When I was in middle school, state officials would go out and recruit players to play basketball. And I hadn't played basketball before then. But because I was so tall, they recruited me. Six years later, with almost no English language skills, he's in the United States, essentially adopted by Charles and his family. I gave my word to him and I'll Last year in China, I said, you're going to be away. You're going to be away from home, but you, you're not going to be lonely. Family here will welcome you in. It's going to be a, a nice atmosphere for you. You know, is it, is it traditional? Is it normal? Probably not. But he's just, he's become one of the family. I really appreciate Charles and his family for having me here with them. I really enjoy spending time with him and his family. This means so much to me. Anybody want a piece of pepperoni? Nobody likes pepperoni? I really don't like it when I'm walking around on the street. I'm shopping and people will come up to me and say, how tall are you? How tall are you? Do you play basketball? What team do you play for? Hey, how tall are you? Seven nine. Dang, seven nine? Seven nine? Oh my God. It's not the fact that they're asking me. It's the fact that it's the same question over and over and over. And that really gets me annoyed. To help buffer him from the unwanted attention and help him adapt, Charles brings in another one of his clients. Someone closer to Sun's age. Michael Goldman, a former star guard at California's College of the Canyons. People just amaze me sometimes. Some of the comments they make, like, you know, you big oaf, 
fig guy, make, you know, they, they, just real derogatory words, and it, it, he doesn't understand them, and I do. And I've had many times where I've wanted to uh, get physical with people because I look at him like he's my brother. And it's just, it's fun, you know, having him see stuff he's never seen before, he's never been exposed to. You know, his, his life was go to the gym, play basketball, go home, that's it. His heart is probably as big as his height. You know, he just is a great, great guy. We were in the rain, and I was wearing a cut basketball shirt. He grabs me, dumps out his laundry, sorts through it to get a sweatshirt to give to me because it was raining. So the stuff like that, it really, you know, when I tell people about Sun Ming Ming, I say at the end, oh yeah. He's seven foot nine. Michael has asked Sun to describe what it's like being so tall. I've asked him and, and his response to that question is, I don't know any different, so it's normal for me. You know, he thinks that it's, it's normal. You know, being seven foot nine is, you know, that, that's what he was dealt. That's, you know, so he, he doesn't know any different. He did say that uh, he's had many headaches from bumping his head. That was the one thing he said he didn't like about being seven foot nine. I asked uh, the translator to ask him, you know, what, what did he think about the people here and the people in China. He said that he likes it here a lot better because all he'll see is flash bulbs and cameras and camera phones. In China, they'll follow him wherever he goes. I mean, I was, when I was out there, people were actually following him to, into the bathroom, following him into the arena and trying to get into his hotel room. They're just so fascinated by his height. You know, so he said out here, the camera phones, they don't phase him. He's fine with that. Michael and his pals introduced Sun to life in California, from the beach to the Hollywood club scene. I gave him a beer, drinks hitting maybe one sip, just the whole thing gone. So I pour shots for everybody, and in, in Chinese, gambe is kind of like cheers when you say gambe. So I kind of raised my glass, said gambe, and he goes, all right. His face that he made was the funniest thing I've ever seen. So he takes the shot, and about three minutes later, he's leading the group of seven of us to the dance floor. And he's on the dance floor doing this. <laughs> Sun Ming Ming is an absolute hit with reporters from the Chinese community. Of course, uh, this is uh, big news for our agent, uh, agency, uh, also for the Chinese community to know there's another taller, taller guy, a uh, bigger guy than Yao Ming, who enters into uh, this year's NBA draft. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, terrific. Oh, he's huge, you know. I've never seen some, somebody that tall. Yeah, he's extremely, and he, he looks really nice person. Okay, my first impression was uh, he really is big, big and make me feel like, uh, make me feel look like a midget <laughs> instead of uh, standing in front of him. But he has a good heart, very nice, uh, kind and warm. And of, of course, we can communicate with the uh, you know, same language, Mandarin, which uh, help, uh, know, help us to know each other better. When I first met him today, what I feel is he is taller than before, because I interviewed him uh, two, almost two years ago, and he's getting taller and taller. And then he's still very gentle. Well, definitely he has a great advantage. You know, his height is amazing, um, seven, eight. He's practically the tallest person in the whole world. So um, I think the most important thing for him is to get used to the American lifestyle, and um, I think that's it. My first impression today, I stepping into this gym, I saw him, I was shocked. I, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> he uh, is uh, such a big guy. And uh, to my impression, he's also uh, a mild personality. 
and uh, I think that's good for, for him because uh, being Oriental, he's got to have some uh, major difference from uh, Western guys and that was outstanding him from uh, the same you know, uh, height or, or weight and he has an Oriental philosophy. I think he does have those and uh, so that will impress the uh, American uh, fans. I think in the years to come he will be uh, kind of different from Yao Ming but uh, he will, his, he will his, have his own philosophy. I think people will like him. I, I think uh, the most important thing for uh, Sun Ming Min to do now is to uh, pick up his English ability. And so he has, the, uh, has to get the more information, more opinion from people around him uh, to, you know, to, to start up a better uh, uh, kickoff for his new life in the States. So I think uh, English is the only uh, language we have to, you know, to, to use. Just put down Chinese aside and, you know, to, to get, get acquainted with more American people and fans and, and get more data from the internet, more things from the books. Of course, they'll be all English, so that's very important for him to, to, to know more English. Some think Sun can change the way the sport is played. I honestly believe that Sun Ming Ming will revolutionize the game of basketball. Sun brings to the game a new definition of tall. Even at six foot two, Michael Goldman needs to launch himself to clear the 10 foot rim and dunk. But Sun hardly needs to leave the ground when he slam dunks. There's a saying in basketball that you can't teach height. The fact that he's so big, uh, it's really uncharted uh, territory, and size matters. The fact that he can shoot the ball effectively from 15 feet uh, shows that, that he's got some innate coordination. Sun has what they call soft hands, meaning he shoots and handles the ball well. But his conditioning is virtually non-existent. Uh, he gets tired so quickly that you can't Im I can't imagine him in an NBA setting because you go up and down the court twice. Uh, I mean, he'd have to go lie down. Down and back. Mm -hmm. Be sure you go hard. Oh! If he ever gets in shape, he could be in a, in a special category. OK, I'll go back. Yeah. He's, he's not going to shrink. The other guys might get tired. He won't shrink. So if he can get to the point where he doesn't get tired, he'll have an advantage. He definitely has long road ahead. You know, and uh, we took this project on knowing it could be two years down the road. So Charles has a plan for Sun, one that will push him to his limits. Call it boot camp for basketball. Sun travels to North Carolina, where he is put in the hands of Keith Gatlin, who's trained some of the biggest stars in the NBA. Ah, the D. This is first time having like training where it's really intense, one on one. Good, good move. We work Ming out three times a day. We'll start probably at nine o'clock in the morning. We get a lot of shots up, probably about 250, 300 shots. And then we'll go to 11 for strength and conditioning. And then we'll get some lunch, come back at three. Me! 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 Good! Good! Four! If Keith doesn't wear out the big guy, fitness expert James Wilson will. Like, for instance, today, what we're doing is the uh, speed endurance. Go! Get those knees up. And like a nervous stage mother, Charles keeps a watchful eye on Sun. I think he's very sensitive about disappointing us. You know, we brought him out here, we're investing a lot in him, and we, I try to tell him, it's okay, you're gonna have good days, you're gonna have bad days, we're gonna be here regardless. As imposing a figure as he is on the outside, on the inside, there is something terribly wrong with Sun. What is making him so big might also kill him. I have to face facts. This could cost me my life. Greensboro, North Carolina, 
nearly seven foot nine basketball player Sun Ming Ming is being put through his paces by a pair of the country's top trainers. Their job, make him NBA material. Sun was brought to the United States from China two months ago as a work in progress by sports agent Charles Bonsignor. You know, in China, he was just a body. He was just a body, standing in the middle, trying to block some shots, try to be, get in the way. In here, it's actually learning how to play basketball. Uh, okay. Sun has spent most of his time in the States under the protective wing of Charles. In Greensboro, he's been taken in by a second surrogate family, Rocky and Celeste Manning. Good form. Oh, good. We're very fortunate we can afford to take him and feed him and take care of him, and we just hope we make a difference in his life. I love it here very much. It feels like home. It's been kind of interesting because he's so tall, but um, uh, he's, he's very quiet and not quite as loud and rowdy as everybody else is in the family. So, um, but I think it's starting to rub off on him. Even though he can barely speak English, Sun is soaking up Americana. He has really come out personality-wise. He smiles and he laughs. But still, there is no escaping Sun's height. In basketball-crazed North Carolina, he's a media sensation. TV news crews can't get enough. And radio talk shows spread the word about the big man from China. And I saw the biggest Chinese guy I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Ming is here training to um, go into the NBA. Yeah. Good luck. Good Hope to see you in the NBA. Hey, obviously, he's got to get to a 10 in terms of his conditioning. Um, his scale right now, uh, I would say it's probably a four or a five. Now, after seven weeks of intense training in North Carolina, Sun gets the call every NBA hopeful dreams of. We follow him to a private workout session inside the Los Angeles Lakers practice facility. It's the chance of a lifetime. I'm not nervous. I'm really excited to go. It's like a Hollywood audition in front of the Lakers' top scouts and general manager. This could be Sun's big break. Sun's conditioning has improved, but he's still winded and lacks stamina. For now, the Lakers choose not to sign him. Very good. I got really tired at the end. It's good though, you were an hour and a half. Sun's ongoing fatigue confounds everyone. Charles's years of experience seeing athletes train tells him this may be more than a conditioning problem. Charles arranges for Sun to see a doctor. The doctor saw some things that bothered him a little bit and ordered one test, which led to another, which led to another. A blood test reveals a hormonal imbalance. Doctors suspect Sun may have a pituitary gland disorder. The only way to find out is with an MRI. But an MRI on someone nearly eight feet tall is a challenge. The machines have a certain weight capacity but more importantly, the problem is simply whether or not the patient has enough space around him to fit into the scanner so that we can perform the examination. Sun is squeezed into the scanner, and the resulting MRIs hold the first clue as to what his real problem is, something no one wanted to hear. He has a tumor inside his head. The tumor secretes growth hormone. This is the reason his frame has grown to such a gigantic size. It is also affecting every other part of his body, his heart, his colon, his joints, and these can all become problems. Simply put, Sun has never stopped growing. He suffers from an extremely rare condition called gigantism. This condition is dangerous 
Uh, in fact, this condition is a killer. Everything is big in these people, including their heart, and it fails. In the U.S., there have only been about 100 reported cases ever. Normally, height is hereditary. Son's growth is different, caused by the tumor lurking inside his brain. I would like to be able to have an endocrinologist replace his hormones. And it is both a blessing and a curse. Uh, it is a blessing because hopefully, because of his height, he can achieve his dreams as an NBA player. Unfortunately, it is a curse because this disease, if left alone, if untreated, can be fatal, and he may die from heart failure right on the basketball court. The only solution is a complicated surgical procedure, which has perils all its own. The tumor is crushing son's pituitary gland but it has lodged itself against one of his carotid arteries, the main blood vessels from the heart to the brain, and is also dangerously close to his optic nerves. If you injure the carotids, it can be death from bleeding or a stroke, a massive stroke. And if you injure the optic nerves, that's blindness. Son's fate now lies in the hands of Dr. Shahinian, but because of the position of the tumor, Dr. Shahinian won't know if it was completely removed until several weeks, even months, after the surgery. Sun Ming Ming is a seven foot nine giant. His height is both a blessing and a curse. While it might get him to the NBA, his condition could kill him. I'm a very practical person, so I have to face facts. This could cost me my life, even without the operation. That's all tumor, all this is tumor. Doctors discovered a tumor that secretes growth hormone is pressing against his pituitary gland and causing havoc with son's hormone levels. The pituitary gland is the master gland, and it controls all the other glands in the body. That is the thyroid gland, the adrenal gland, and the testicles in males. The average American male is about five foot nine and a half and stops growing in the years following puberty. But because the tumor has affected son's pituitary gland, he has not gone through puberty, and the tumor itself is making growth hormone. He is still growing, and that's typical of these giants. The reason is the epiphyseal plates in their long bones, which are the growth plates, have not uh, closed yet, because the growth hormone, the excess growth hormone, is preventing those plates from closing. Son suffers from the same condition as the tallest man in history, Robert Wadlow. His story mirrors Sun Ming Ming's. Born to average-sized parents, like Sun, Wadlow never stopped growing. I'm Robert Wadlow, 12 years old, and weigh 240 pounds, and I'm wet. I'm about seven feet tall. Wadlow grew to an astounding eight feet, 11 and one-tenth inches. He died in 1940 from a foot infection. He was the same age as Sun Ming Ming. Sun might face the same fate as Robert Wadlow. His only option is to remove the tumor through brain surgery. First, Sun must be examined to clear him for the operation. He's about 360, he said. A cardiologist will determine if Sun's heart has been affected by his condition. It's just looking for any abnormalities uh, in general. Now, he has giantism, which can affect the heart. So I was doing a careful cardiac exam as well. Cutting edge medical care does not come cheaply. Donations from the Chinese community and the Mannings back in North Carolina pick up some of the cost, but Charles is the one who pays the lion's share of Sun's medical expenses. What started as a business venture has become much, much more. Right now, basketball is, is way on the back burner. None of us really care about basketball at this point. He is a member of the family, and we're going to do whatever we can to, uh, to, to help him get better and then help him achieve his goals after that. You know, if it was my son or my daughter, he said, well, it's expensive, it's hard to do. You have to find a way to do it. If it wasn't for Charles, I don't know what would happen. He's the reason I'm able to have this operation. 
He's the reason I have a chance to make my dream come true. Most patients go home within a day or two, but as with any surgery, there can be complications. When we give informed consent, we talk about uh, uh, god-awful things like death and stroke and bleeding and blindness and all of those things. Uh, we do not expect those things. I was really nervous when I was told the possible risks and the complications of the operation and the fact that there's a chance I might go blind, have a stroke or even die. He said that it, he's scared. Hearing a seven foot nine guy say he's scared, you know, it, it hits home. It's, it's a little, you know, this big guy, you know, you think he's unbreakable and something like this could break him. And I think he's, he's praying every day and, and he's just hoping for the best. When the tests are completed, Sun's cardiologist has the report. What I was very surprised to see is that the heart is within normal limits. I kind of expected to see a larger heart, more muscular heart, and I didn't. Until recently, Sun's surgery meant a procedure called bifrontal craniotomy, literally cracking open the skull to get to the tumor. We're all set. Mission go. OK? It's going to be OK. But Dr. Shahinian has pioneered a revolutionary procedure called endoscopic endonasal. We basically try to, to cause the least amount of disruption to the normal anatomy. The entire operation will be done through Sun's nose using an endoscope, a fiber optic device with a camera. Once under anesthesia, Sun's head is carefully positioned. The key of this whole surgery uh, is to use natural openings. Dr. Shahinian probes into Sun's head. We gently chip off bone, which is protecting the pituitary gland. And then we start evacuating the tumor piecemeal. Watching his every step on a monitor, Dr. Shahinian reaches the area of the pituitary gland and Sun's tumor. I know this is the gland. I don't need to go any more further behind that. We have specially custom-made extra long instruments because his features are so big that the regular instruments are going to be a little bit short. Now we're at the tumor. There's a tumor right there, parts of it, and we're taking it out piecemeal. There's a piece right there that's going to go to the pathology. The surgeon must use care while he tugs at the soft tumor and suctions away the pieces. The surgery lasts nearly three hours. If all went well, Sun will begin a new life with what will in many ways be a new body. But during his recovery, doctors make a startling discovery a setback that could destroy Sun's dreams forever. At Cedars Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles, Chinese basketball player Sun Ming Ming has had the pituitary tumor that made him nearly seven foot nine surgically removed. Ming Ming, hi, all finished. Yeah. Okay, you did great. How many fingers? Two. Okay. How many fingers? Two. Excellent. You did great. Tumor's out. Okay? He did very well. Okay. Nice soft tumor. Okay. Came out completely. We will do his hormonal testing in a few weeks, okay. and we will know for sure. All right. Uh, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's out. Everything's out. It's clean. Okay. He should do well. All right. All right. Thank you. See you later. Okay. For the next two weeks, doctors orders complete rest. Sun is anxious to get back to work. He meets with his surgeon for a follow-up. Um, he said, about how long does he need to wait before he can lift weights and you know play like a real game and stuff? I would say six weeks. Four more weeks. 
we need to make sure his hormones are in the perfect range for him to have the stamina to do the full-on uh, workout. Doesn't he feel the difference in his fingers, in his feet? They're yeah. smaller. Monitoring Sun's hormones will be key. For the first time, they should be normal. Sun will go through changes most young men deal with in their early teens. The last probably three to four days have been amazing. You know, he's really, he's, it's almost like he's blossomed. He's opened up, he's laughing. You know, the doctor said he'd be completely different, and the doctor's right. With the surgery behind him, things seem to be going great. But a visit to the endocrinologist to check his hormone levels changes all that. We discover my growth hormone level is still higher than it was supposed to be. There's a possibility that the tumor was not entirely removed. After surgery, doctors told me it was successful. So to hear the news that the tumor still might be there is very disappointing. When Sun first heard that there was maybe a piece of the tumor still left, he just folded. It was like somebody kicked him in the stomach, and I was afraid that all the progress he's made just went out the window. To find out if, in fact, there is still tumor remaining, Sun needs another MRI. Hopefully, today I hear some good news, that the entire tumor has been removed. That's the area of interest that we're looking at. This is where they did the operation. Seven weeks after surgery, Sun is braced to hear Dr. Shahinian's report. So there is no more tumor here, and there is no more tumor here. Here, there is a tiny amount of tumor on the left side. The MRI shows a small bit of tumor still attached to the carotid artery. It's too dangerous to remove it surgically. You know, this tumor is attached to the blood vessel, so we cannot risk that blood vessel because if we injure the blood vessel, he will have a massive stroke. So this will be controlled with the medications. The quickest remedy, radiation, is also the most expensive. Just as effective are long-term medications to kill it off. You know, he can do everything as long as he can normalize his hormones and move forward because he has a lot to uh, look forward to. Despite the news, Sun is relieved to find out that he can slowly get back to work. He'll get on the medication that he needs to kill off the rest of this tumor and he can continue. This is your pituitary gland. This right here oh. is that. It's a setback, but it's not a setback where he has to stop playing basketball. You've come a long way. Okay. When he arrived in the U.S., the giant could barely make it up and down the court. Now, 10 weeks after surgery, Sun is flying high. Get up, get up, hands! Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, hands! Uh, up high, come on, three, ah! Up three! Ah, ah get low, get low! Pick him up, pick him up, come on! Ah, step in! That's what I'm talking about! You know, it's amazing because I watch him grow every single time I got him. He, he, there's something about him that it's like watching a kid grow but extra fast. And he's, he's just getting more endurance every single time I get him. Good. Up. Good. Ah, don't cheat me. Don't cheat me. Now, come on. Two more. Two more. But has Sun improved enough to make his NBA dreams come true? Is he ready for his next challenge? A game that will put his newfound stamina to the test. It ain't gonna come easy, you know that, right? Come on, come on. It is now 10 weeks since Sun Ming Ming's surgery to remove a pituitary tumor that caused him to grow to nearly seven foot nine. His lack of stamina is a thing of the past. 
Turn the body, turn the body, turn me. Sun still must get shots of testosterone and take pills to bring his hormones to near normal levels. But his energy is up, and Sun's finally seeing results. His work is starting to pay off. And I, it wasn't the fact that before the surgery he didn't work hard. It was the fact that he worked hard but couldn't progress. Now he's working hard and he is progressing. So Sun is a little kid in a candy store. Soon, would you like to come up and write? Sun is embracing the melting pot mentality with enthusiasm, taking English classes. Okay, how many people watch sports in their leisure time? One, two, three, four, five. You watch sports, so you like a part about the watch sports. <laughs> <coughs> so eight people. Thank you so much, Soon. You're welcome. Over time, he has just developed into a great student. He interacts with the other students, and he's learning fast. He's a bright student. To, uh, go to a uh, baseball game, baseball football, baseball. Go to the movies sometimes, mm. or never? No, never. Never? Not in uh, America, in China sometimes. Yeah. As you can see, we have a special desk for him because I felt sorry for him squeezed up in the little desks that we have. His English is night and day to what it was when he first got out here, so it's actually fun to be able to have a conversation with him now. I taught him how to talk trash. I've taught him some words that I can't really use on television. And just what did Michael teach him? I don't know. After two months of recuperation, Sun is in full swing, working out with the Ventura, California Community College team. Move your feet, son. Move your feet. Move your feet. He's got a long way to go, but he, he's still, um, he's made huge progress. The biggest thing he needs to do is get stronger. And uh, if he continues to do that, then I think there's no question he'll be making money next year somewhere. Everything about Sun is maturing. Now, like most young men, he's moved out on his own. Son left Charles' home to live with several of the Ventura players. When I was living with Charles, I would have to be careful doing things. But now I'm on my own. I can sleep whenever I want. That's one of the biggest differences. There was a, a bit of a void when Sun moved out of the house, but um, I think he, Sun was ready to move. It'll give him more confidence that he's living independently, and um, it's a great cultural experience for Sun. Oh. <laughs> the same goes for his roommates, too. It was crazy. He's like, he's big. I, I never seen nobody that big before. It was a shock. Never seen nobody that tall, especially when he had to walk through the door, how, how far he had to bend down. It's been a bad for him. My man. You know, it was a lot of English now. Like, so we could understand each other a lot. Like, yesterday he spoke to my mother on the phone, and they was talking. Uh, that one is, is harder than this one. We definitely proud of him with the progress that he's making. He got full support from his team. My favorite is Duke. Duke? <laughs> Son's progress will soon be challenged in an exhibition game, his first since the operation, a showcase that might bring him one step closer to the NBA. Many of the people who have helped Son are converging in this California gym. I'm excited. I'm excited that Sun's going to get the opportunity to get out there on the court. Kind of this is a benchmark of, of where he is in terms of his rehab. I think he's probably about 70, 75% there. I'm nervous for him. You know, it's his first time playing in a while. So I'm uh, looking forward to see how he's progressed over the last few months of working out. So I'm, I'm a little nervous, but excited at the same time. Even Rocky Manning has flown in from North Carolina. Well, I'm really proud of him. He's come a long way. When he came, when he first got here, he was very secluded and couldn't speak any English at all, and now he's a completely different person. Ah! 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 
When Sun is announced, the reaction is huge. Many in the stands have come just to see him. Towering over the other players, Sun puts his newfound energy and all his heart in the game. Sun more than makes his presence known. I think he needs to get angry. I really think he just needs to get angry. You know, guys were pushing him around. It's funny, he kind of looked at one of the guys like, did you push me? Well, you know, it's the, that's the game. I think once he gets tougher, I think he's gonna be a force. The game is close and exciting. Sun's team pulls off a thrilling double overtime win. Sun proves to everyone he's a player, and he even has some star power. It was fun, huh? I'll be honest, when we, when we came running out and I heard the crowd all yell for him, I got, you know, I teared up a little bit. I mean, it was just a, you know, he's went through a lot. He's worked really hard. I mean, here I am starting to get emotional. But it's just, it was neat to just see the crowd embrace him and go crazy when he made a basket. What I saw tonight was, what was better than what I thought I would see. I was a bit nervous going in, um, but I'm, I'm very, very proud of him. I kind of felt like a scared father watching his son, uh, you know, ride his bike without training wheels for the first time. You know, it was great. He did a great job. I think this guy's the limit for him. So, Darren, do you start with him? That's the first time I've run up and down in game action for about four months. I still need to improve my stamina, and hopefully, it will get better from now on. I can do it. Sun is upbeat. But will this be the first step toward realizing his dream? Thirteen months after coming to the U.S. and undergoing brain surgery, Sun Ming Ming's hard work is about to pay off. On behalf of Dodge City Legend and the United States Basketball League, we're happy to be here to announce the signing of Sun Ming Ming to a professional basketball contract. Players that have played in the past in the USBL have been Spud Webb, Manute Bowl, Avery Johnson, and hopefully he can use this as a stepping stone to get to the NBA. Well, obviously at seven foot nine, 360 pounds, there's nobody in the country that can match up with him. If he can put people in the stands and a ball in the basket, it's a win-win for everybody. The USBL is one of several professional leagues that feed players to the NBA. Sun is on his way to play in Kansas, one step closer to making his dream come true. Words can't express how happy I am for him. It's been a, a long process. He's dealt with everything that's come to him like a man. Nice shot. We brought him over as a client. And, and he basically became a family member. And I probably couldn't ask for a better person to, uh, to, to bring into the family. With medication still treating his condition, Sun looks forward to his next MRI. That will determine if the remaining tumor is gone for good. Until then, Sun is thankful for everyone who brought him to where he is today. I've been living with Charles' family for over a year, and they've been great to me. I appreciate everything he's done. So right now I'm kind of sad. He's been like my second dad. And I thank all the people who have helped me through the surgery and all my time.